Hello everyone, it's Deborah from Matic Lane and today I'm going to show you how I made 10 cards from one kit and I'm using the most recent release, the Julie Loves Pretty kit. This is how it arrives in a box, it's all very exciting when you lift the lid and this box is absolutely stuffed. To begin with there are candies, now these are pearlised card cut into circles, they're slightly domed and you can see the five different colours that you get and I hope you can see the shimmer on them as well. This is a surprise gift so I'm not going to show you that. And then these are all the cards that you get as part of the kit. There are playing cards and then these ones that I'm showing you just now have shaped edges and scalloped edges. This is a loyalty card and when you buy the stamps that are associated with the kit you get a little uh, sticker and it goes on your card. And here is the paper pad, it's a 6x6 six six paper pad. And there are several each of uh, a number of designs and they are very pretty, they're ditzy prints. Uh, there's lots of spots, there's lots of uh, gingham, there's lots of stripes as well. It's, uh, it's really versatile paper. These stripes really caught my eye and they proved to be very versatile. And next I'm going to show you the little cards that you get. Uh, there are some details about extra stamps associated with this kit and then there are some design ideas to get you started. Then you get two each of 6x6 six six, uh, cards that are printed with various words, sentiments, um, all kinds of uh, things on there. Those words are very useful, you can cut those out and use them individually. Um, or you could use them as a background. There are hearts, there are uh, banners, there are stars, there are just all sorts of things in there. So I'm going to start with that striped paper that we saw. Now this is double sided adhesive and I'm going to use it uh, to uh, glue onto the front of uh, half of that uh, sheet of paper and then I'm going to throw some glitter over it and I'll show you the effect that you can get. So you just have to be a little bit careful when you're applying the double sided adhesive. So I'm using uh, Distress Glitter, it's clear, uh, I think it's called Rock Candy And I'm burnishing the glitter on with my finger just to make sure none of it flies loose and you can see that lovely shimmer. So now I'm going to cut them into strips and I'm going to use them in a, in a project later on. But it's almost like you create your own glittery washi tape. I've selected the pieces I'm going to use for card one and I'm going to use that piece that I'm cutting off now, the end of that scallop border, um, as a template to cut out other scallop borders as well so that I create a swag. I'm going to cut each of those out. So I've cut out the white one and layered it up so you can see how it will look. And now I'm choosing one of the sentiments. From the paper pad I'm going to take this piece of green cardstock and I'm going to cut an extra scallop border. So I'm going to have three layers to my little swag. I'm using a blue card base and I'm just going to glue that onto a white card base. It's got lovely soft blue stripes on it, I hope you can see those. And there's my swag and I'm going to layer it up and then I'm going to stick it in place. When that's all layered up and glued into place I'm going to put it over the front of my card to see how much overhangs. I'm just going to use a pencil to mark off where I need to cut it and trim it to size. I'm happy with that and now this extra piece, uh, this blue strip of paper, I'm going to cut down to the same size as well. I'm going to use this to add some dimension. So this is craft foam which I'm using to back it and add a little bit of extra interest and extra dimension because I'm going to glue that onto the back of the blue strip uh, and then stick it in place on my card. So with my sentiment glued, uh, I can stick that into place as well. And I'm, I'm putting that down first. I'm going to use it as a marker for where I want that little banner to go in the bottom. And now I can glue that up and I can put it in place. I'm going to use some of those rather lovely pearlized blue candies as well at the bottom of the swag, just to add a little bit of extra interest. 
and I'll complete the card with some Wink of Stella on the uh, U of my little blue card at the top. Now my card is complete. For card two, I'm cutting down a piece of paper to size so it will fit inside my white card base. I'm also going to measure the centre point in the middle because I'm going to use a template again from one of the other cards in the kit and I'm going to use that to create a little bit of interest at the top of a, an otherwise square border I'm going to put around my card. And with all the lines drawn I'm ready to use my craft knife and a cutting mat. You can see now that I've got three straight edges and one slightly curved edge and that's where I use my template. I'm using white craft foam, I've cut some very narrow strips that will fit within the border of that frame and now I'm going to use my border as a template again so that I can cut out a piece that will fit exactly underneath my border. And now they're all cut I can glue them in place. my frame is ready and it makes a nice 3D effect against my base card. So now I'm going to use some of the triangular letters from one of the sheets in the kit and I've cut out the words the word welcome and I want to back these. I want them to stand out a little bit better from that base card and so I'm gluing them onto a piece of green paper and once they're all glued in place, I will uh, stick that onto the craft foam sheet as well. And once that's stuck in place, I will cut them out. So they will have a little green border, which will help them stand out more. And they will also have a 3D effect because of the craft foam. Now I did do craft foam on the back of all of them, but I decided when I was assembling the card that I didn't want foam on the W and the E at the beginning and the end of the word. I wanted them to stick straight onto the border. Now I'm using my pencil to mark where each of the letters will go because I want to uh, use some twine to create a string that they will hang from. I'm going to glue my border in place because I'm happy with that now and I'm using a piece of natural twine which uh, I'm finding the centre point for, for so that I make sure I've got plenty of uh, twine to hang from either end. So I've removed the letters to give me space to glue that piece of twine in place and when I'm happy with the twine I will add the letters back in. And then they are all being stuck in place and glued into place into their final positions. And you can see it, I've added a, a couple of little twiddly loops on that twine as well. So now I'm using the candies again. I'm using foam squares to back them with to give them some dimension. I'm going to stick one in each corner and then I'm going to wrap the twine around them. I decided that my border needed a little bit more interest on the inner edge so once I've stuck this onto my white base card I'm going to take a very fine black pen and I'm going to add some faux stitching around the edge. And with that my card is complete. For card three I'm going to use some of those glittery washi tape uh, strips that we made earlier on and I found that Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers was a perfect match for one of the sentiments. So I'm going to use it to edge my base white card and I just need to put a little strip down uh, each of those four sides. Once that's complete you can see that it creates a lovely border when I add my, my uh, white card onto that. So that's the card I'm going to work on next and I'm going to add these strips uh, I'm going to decide which order I want them all to go in and then I'm going to glue them in place. Once they're stuck down I will trim off the excess 
and I will place it onto my blue bordered base card. And I hope you can see the shimmer from the glitter on those strips. So now I'm going to use the star card and I'm going to cut out uh, some of the blank stars on there. And again, I'm going to position them in place on my card. And when I'm happy with where everything is at, I'm going to stick it all down. And my card is complete. For card four, again, I'm using one of the other card pieces as a template. I've chosen my sentiment, which is the red card that says be happy, but I want to make this into a tag on blue. Now, none of the sheets of uh, had a blue throughout, so I'm going to have to make my own. And that's fine because there's plenty of uh, card available to do that with. And I'm going to position it on uh, this base piece of card. And then when everything is stuck down, I will trim it to size. I'm going to stick my red sentiment on there and then I'll trim it again to make sure that it, uh, it is a nice tag shape. I'm going to add an eyelet using my cropper dial. And I'll secure that in place so that I can attach ribbon. This is just some white spotty ribbon that I had in my stash. Now I have some blue twine and I'm going to put that through the loop as well. That will just give it a bit of extra interest. Now this kit gives you plenty of opportunities to create your own paper and that's exactly what I'm doing again. I'm going to use these blue strips as a border for my base. I've used one of the green pearlized candies and I'm going to add some leaves. So I'm using the green paper and I'm just going to loosely cut out some oval shapes and I'm going to curl them over and I will glue them in place. I'm using um, a matte uh, medium from Deco Art because I've run out of my favourite type of glue and I know I have some somewhere, but uh, at this stage I couldn't find it and it was so frustrating. So here's my tag, it's complete, it has its little leaves on it and I've added some uh, foam tape at the back so that uh, when I remove those and stick it onto the card it has some dimension. And my card is complete. On to card five. And this is going to be a shaker card and I found that the dies that I have from Cottage Cuts were a perfect fit for the sentiments. Now here's the acetate but actually it's not an acetate proper, it's uh, some leftover lamination. So whenever you laminate a pocket if you have a little bit left over it's worth keeping it because it can be used as a very firm acetate layer. So I'm just gluing this in, into a border that I've already cut out and I will add foam tape at the back of that. This is a very simple card and it's quite quick to prepare. So I'm gluing my sentiment into place on a base piece of craft card. And now I'm going to show you uh, a use for the candies. Uh, I'm going to cut them up. If you don't have sequins, if you don't have anything to put inside a shaker card, you can use the candies. And because they're pearlized, they give a nice little glow. I also have a little bit of chunky glitter from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to add that. Uh, you can add glitter, you can add beads, anything light and it will just supplement the cut up candies. And here's a few that I cut up earlier and I'm adding these to my card as well. When they're all contained in the area that I want them to be within, I will uh, remove the foam from the back of my uh, frame and I will glue that in place. And you need to check it's working. So you need to give it a shake, shaky shake. And that's my card. It's very simple, but it's very effective. For card six, I wanted to do some sewing. So I've taken one of the sentiments, I've cut out a piece of craft card and white card so that they layer on top of each other. And I've gone round both of the edges twice, uh, just with some white sewing. 
and now I'm using a distress tool. It's a Tim Holtz tool and it just helps you scuff up the sides of your paper, although you can just as easily do it with a craft knife or sometimes just with your nail if you've got enough nail to do that with. So I'm layering it all up, sticking my sentiment on the white card, then I will stick the sentiment on the white card on the craft card and then I will position the whole lot onto a piece of white base card. And because I didn't do my measurements too cleverly at the beginning of this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, position the whole design on top of the base card and then I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to take a tiny little strip off the top of the base card. And you can see I'm, I'm positioning the design slightly lower down because I know I want to trim a little off to make it look a bit more square. And with that my card is almost finished. I'm going to scuff up the edges ever so slightly more and I'm also going to use some Nouveau Jewel Drops. These are the red Jewel Drops uh, and I'm just going to add a few little dots all over the base card to give it a little bit of extra glimmer and a little bit of extra interest. I'm just testing the, the flow is good before I add them onto my card. And there we go, and the card is complete. For card seven, I wanted to do a little bit more sewing. So I took some contrasting colours and I cut out uh, a large heart and a little heart and then I sewed them all through. And when you're sewing, you don't need to sew them individually. You can just keep feeding them through your sewing machine and then cut them all off at the end. This is going to be a very plain, simple card. So I'm positioning them all on a white card and I've already cut a frame. Uh, which has some foam tape on the back of it. So when I'm happy with the position of my hearts, I'm going to remove the backing on the foam and I'm going to fix the frame onto the base card. I have a sentiment that says happy birthday and I'm going to just trim that down a little because I want to fit that just to the bottom of the card. You can add any of the sentiments that fit or no sentiment at all. I think it would be very nice as a plain card. And my card is complete. For card eight, I'm using acetate again, although it's a laminated sheet. And I'm going to, uh, I've glued that in place and I'm going to fit it onto a, over a piece of white card so that it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. I've used one of the cards that has words on it and I've cut out individual words that say, hello, beautiful, have a great birthday. And you can see when I take the card away, the words are very clear. And that's a very simple card. I've put a couple of hearts that were left over from the previous project as well. On card nine, I've cut out some strips in readiness from the paper stack. And I'm going to use some of the hearts. I'm showing you two, but in the end I cut out four. And here are some of the papers that I used to cut the strips. And they're all cut to varying widths. Now I'm using the same trick that I did on an earlier card and I'm using green paper to cut out some leaves because I used the four hearts to create a flower and I've used a candy to secure them in the centre. So I have a piece of craft card and I'm using vintage photo distress oxiding to go around the outside to give it a frame. I've done the same with the sentiment that I've chosen to use on this card as well. So now I'm going to position the strips and when I'm happy with where they're going to be I will glue them into place. Once again, I'm using white craft foam to create dimension on the back of some of the elements of the card. So on the sentiment and also a little white circle that I've cut out that will go on the back of my flower. I'm using my cropper dial again. I'm going to add an eyelet to my sentiment because I want to put some twine through that. I wasn't sure if the cropper dial and the, uh, the eyelet would go through the craft foam, but they do quite well. I'm using natural twine again, uh, just to tie a bow onto that sentiment. And then when I'm happy with that, I will glue it in place just under the flower. I've also added the word friend popping out above my main sentiment and that was cut from the cardstock as well. So 
So when that's mounted onto my white card base, you'll see it just looks nice and clean and finished. And on to card 10. Now again I've cut out a selection of strips from blue and green uh, from the paper pad. I've cut them into various strips of different lengths and different widths and I'm adding a fishtail to the top and bottom of each piece. I've positioned them roughly and now I'm gluing them into place. And you can see they're, they're all slightly taller or shorter than each other. I've taken a word from the uh, the cardstock that says congratulations and I have some blue twine which I'm using to wrap around the whole design. I've used a candy again I've poked a hole in it with my cropper dial because I wanted to pull the twine up through it and then tie a bow on the top of it and I'm going to secure that in place with a foam pad. Now when I'm happy with everything and where it is, I can add my congratulations. I've already put some foam on the back of that and I'm going to stick it in place. And just to complete the look, um, once I've put this onto my base white card, I'm just going to go over the congratulations word with clear wink of Stella to make it shine. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching as always. And I'm going to leave you with some close-ups of all the cards that we've made today and a little bit of music. Thank you.